Hey everybody, James Jagger, Tactical Response. People were saying that in my, my video where I was talking about up or down that I look, I look tired or sleepy, so I just wanna make sure you guys know I got plenty of energy today and uh, with, the, with the help of my monster rehab. Mary's over laughing at me. Uh, check out Mary's uh, uh, YouTube, G uh, Gats and Tats, uh, if you wanna see one of the chicks that works here, what uh, some of her thoughts on guns and gear and stuff like that are. Uh, Gats and Tats over on uh, YouTube. Um, okay, I've been asked to do something about fuel storage, and I want to talk about a few things. I'm by no means a, a subject matter expert on fuel storage. Uh, there are people that, that are, but apparently they're not making YouTube videos. Anyway, a bunch of you guys asked me to make a video, and so here it is. Let's talk about it. <laughs> you need fuel. <laughs> uh, you need fuel to, if you live uh, someplace when you want to get to another place, if there's some kind of emergency, um, you can forget buying gas. If we just look at hurricane evacuations, if we just look at that thing right there, the gas stations are sold out uh, immediately. So, how much fuel do you need? Blah, 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 blah. In general, here's what I recommend. Think about um, having enough gas cans in your garage, as long as it's safe and all that stuff, uh, in your garage or shed to fill up your car if it were empty. Okay, and so, and you need to know the distance you can drive in your vehicle that's loaded down with a bunch of stuff. Your fuel mileage decreases, okay? Um, so think about how much fuel it takes uh, to fill your car up and to get how far you get with that. Let's say your car, I'm making up a number, has a 100 mile range, fully loaded, full of tank of gas. Uh, first off, consider getting a better gas mileage vehicle. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, so. Uh, at that 100 mile mark, you got a couple of options. If you're trying to get somewhere, you can either have more fuel with you. It's not safe to keep it inside the passenger compartment because of the fumes and stuff like that. So you're gonna have to have some kind of rack on the back of the truck or vehicle. Um, one of those things that plug into a trailer hitch with gas cans on it or a trailer with, with gas in it or whatever the case may be, you're gonna have to have additional gas. Or uh, at that 100 mile mark, on a path that you have chosen in advance, you rented a little storage building and you put a bunch of supplies in there, including gasoline uh, and also extra you know, food and stuff like that. Just in case you weren't able to get anything from your home and you had to flee, now you got the storage building with uh, just, I'm not, and I'm not talking about a bunch of stuff and I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a, a 20 to $30 a month, little bitty storage, uh, one of the little locker size, <laughs> small ones uh, in, the, in, the, in the big uh, storage areas. Anyway, so that's going to be your refuel point. And uh, hopefully, with one refueling, you get to go wherever you're going. So most, most vehicles will get, you know, three or 400 miles per tank. Let's call it 300 to be safe. So that's 600 miles with one refill. Uh, that's, you know, you should be able to get away from the danger, be where you're going to be. And remember, you don't want to just leave. You become a refugee if you just leave. You, you want to you want to have some place to go. So depending on where you're at in the in the country or in the world, figure out where you're going to go. Um, if you're an alumnus of Tactical Response, you're welcome to come to my home in Camden, Tennessee. It's probably going to be full of other people, and we'll probably have to take over some houses in the neighborhood. I'm just kidding, neighbors. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, we will have the the safest neighborhood in in the country. Um, and 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 guys go, I'm going to show up because I got a bunch of guns. I got guns, dude. You better bring some food. Uh, anyway, uh, but. Th figure out where you're going to go and how much fuel you need to get to that place um, and do that now do that now before you need uh, before you need it let's talk about a few things um, one what are the things that, that people store I'm gonna talk about what I store I store uh, kerosene and gasoline uh, kerosene uh, because I have several kerosene heaters uh, that uh, very efficient way to heat inside of a home uh, should the power be out and stuff like that um, the safest form of combustion heating uh, as far as I know uh, so that's that's why I have kerosene. Kerosene will also work in a diesel truck. Um, K1 is kerosene, K2 is diesel and it's a more pure form of diesel. Now could you use diesel in a kerosene heater? Apparently you can, I don't know this, but apparently you can and it'll work fine, it just smokes more because it's not as pure. Um, again, I'm not a fuel fuel expert by, by any stretch of the imagination. So that's, those are the two things that I store, kerosene and, uh, and gasoline. Um, when, you get, when you buy gas for storage, try to, even if you have to drive out of your way, it's becoming increasingly difficult, but try to find a place that has no ethanol in the fuel. Uh, from what I understand, the, the, the addition of the ethanol re reduces the lifespan, the usable lifespan of the gasoline. So uh, it's, again, it's getting harder to find, if, but if, it's, if all you got is ethanol, all you got is ethanol, you'll, we'll just deal with it. Um, um, so uh, 
what do, what do I do? How do I store it? Well, I use a couple different things. I've tried several different things over the years uh, for the fuel storage uh, as an additive to, to keep the fuel uh, usable for a longer period of time. This, what this does is it, uh, it makes sure that the gas is usable, but also increases the amount of time between recycling it. So I don't have to be constantly, like once a month, be recycling the gas and filling cans up and, and all that stuff. Now I do it you know, once a year or once a, even every two years. I just kind of stretch it out to see how long it'll last. Now when I refuel, when I use the fuel out of my cans, I'll talk about the cans in just a second, but when I use the fuel, I wait till my truck's got about a half a tank and then I put uh, a couple of cans in there to top top it off. That way it mixes with the, the newer fuel. So if there was some um, issue with the fuel lacking uh, octane or something like that, it's it's diffused by the other gas. Not a total fix, but uh, I've never had a problem with it. I've never noticed um, uh, any decrease in gas mileage from sh uh, driving with gas that was uh, two years old. Um, that's about the longest I've ever stored. It's two years. Um, but uh, and I don't. I'll go ahead and tell you right now. As far as I'm concerned, two-year-old gas is just fine. It smells the same. It works the same in the vehicle. There's no issues with gas mileage or performance. Everything's fine. So I'm going to tell you that I think you can store gas with an additive at least two years. What are those additives? I have used uh, for gasoline Pri G, P R I dash G for gasoline. I've used Stabil S T A B I L, uh, and I've used Seafoam. Uh, S-E-A-F-O-A-M. Uh, you can get uh, Stable and Seafoam at many, many, many auto parts stores. Pri-G is a little bit less uh, uh, available, but still, it's, it's still available and certainly you can order it online. Uh, but, uh, but those things work very well. Now for the diesel or kerosene, there is Pri-D, Pri-Delta, Pri and that's for kerosene or diesel. I bought a kerosene heater off uh, from a local person off a swap and shop kind of a thing that was uh, 10 years old. It was purchased from when they were, we had a really bad ice storm about a decade ago, a little over a decade now. And um, they used it during the ice storm, then they never used it again. I went and bought it from the lady. Uh, it still had the just over 10 year old uh, kerosene in it. Uh, I put a new battery in the, the heater for the electric electric start, but you could always light it with a match uh, if you didn't have batteries. But uh, So I, I, I lit it up, turned it on, it heated up, there was no smoke, it burned efficiently, and so it might not have worked in a vehicle, but I'll tell you right now, 10-year-old kerosene will work just fine, and it had no uh, no additives in it, worked just fine as long as it kept you know kept in a, in a decent place. And this was in a garage in the heater itself, sitting there, and it, and it, was, it worked perfectly. Um, but to err on the side of caution, when I store with kerosene, I put additive in it, okay? Um, now let's talk about the cans and how, how you're gonna store it. I mean, there you can get these huge storage tanks that hold many hundreds of gallons and things like that, or you can get smaller cans. I went with the smaller cans because they're transportable. If I was gonna have a big, a bigger tank, it would just be big enough, maybe like a 55 gallon tank, it would just be big enough to top all my vehicles off before we left. That, that would be the only reason I had anything like that around um, so anyway f f so f so for whatever that's worth um, I don't I'm not a fan of the big cans now what cans do I use I use uh, NATO fuel cans and here is uh, here, here's me discussing the NATO cans versus the plastic cans uh, and some things to consider as far as that goes okay on the right is a NATO fuel can and uh, got, they're real heavy duty uh, they're they have three handles on them so you can carry them uh, one at a time in each hand or two at a time so the handles they, they match up on the outside so it's a very ingenious handle system I know it sounds crazy on the uh, left is a GI water can now the GI water can is a really heavy duty plastic you throw that thing out of a plane it's fantastic uh, they make fuel cans too they're very hard to find but they do make fuel cans like that the construction material and construction of the GI water can and the fuel can are exactly the same with the exception of the ports uh, those are for water uh, water hoses and not for uh, fuel hoses. Now I'm not telling you to use water cans for fuel cans, but I'm saying you can get these for about uh, less than $20 a piece off LCISupply.com straight from the manufacturer. Brand new, never used water cans. Spray paint them red and you got, uh, I think, what, what, what should work out to be a fantastic fuel can. The NATO cans, of course, probably uh, are getting really hard to find. They're probably around 50 bucks a piece. They are fantastic. 
Um, I don't necessarily think that the uh, the fuel the plastic fuel cans are better, but I do believe that they'll bounce more. Uh, but uh, either one of them, I think, is a good choice. And and again, even for water supply, 15, 15 to twenty bucks for a five gallon water can that you can drag behind a truck is a pretty good deal. You can also see on the. Uh, the fuel can that I have the, the red uh, the, the the red tape that's got uh, it says stable and in 311 that means that it was I put stable in that particular can and I did it did it uh, uh, March 2011 the red lets me see just uh, visually that uh, it is fuel uh, gasoline and uh, then I also have uh, blue ones for my kerosene that I have stored okay so we uh, that, that was you know the look I look at the cans and now I want to show you how I swap the fuel from the cans to the vehicle and, and how that works for me and using the super siphon. Uh, you can get the super siphon for around eight or nine dollars. Uh, but uh, anyway, I want you to see like how I switch the fuel out and, and basically how long it takes. All right, so let's get that, uh, that fuel out of those NATO gas cans and uh, into your vehicle. Uh, the fuel that I'm gonna be using today is uh, from October of uh, 2010 which puts it right at two years old and never had any problem running it uh, that long and uh, this particular batch has sea foam in it I'm going to use my super siphon you can get these off amazon.com for around seven or eight bucks they're a fantastic uh, fantastic thing um, inside of the uh, the end of it you should be able to hear that there's a glass there's a glass ball on there and you put this down in the fuel bring it back up and it kind of stays at the top so I'll get a close-up as I'm doing it and see if we can catch it on video for you uh, but uh, anyway I've got the uh, the gas can on top of the, the ladder here and uh, you just need to have the fuel can just a little bit higher than the, where, where it's going and this is significantly higher um, but uh, see I've got a, a, a a bunchy cord in there to hold it still just uh, I don't want any uh, accidents or falling off or anything like that these cans are really tough but if they hit just right you can poke a hole in them so I don't want to hurt my truck or the, the can or myself so we got a, got a little bit of safety <laughs> safety catch there uh, when you open these it's best to have a rag to put over the top because they can spew, uh, spew fuel out and uh, <laughs> like that and so uh, having a rag over the top will catch the, uh, the, the, spew, the fuel that spews out of it but I wanted to, to demonstrate that so you can see what I'm talking about so it builds up quite a bit of uh, uh, pressure inside there so I'm going to try to get it close now see if we can catch this on the on video put the cap off and I'm going to put the, uh, the end of the hose without the uh, <coughs> jiggler on it I'm going to put that into the tank you can put it down in there as far as you want to it doesn't really matter but you just need to have enough slack to get this to the bottom of the fuel can when it's all over with. So let's let's see if we can catch this. So you can see the fuel in the tube right there. So I do it real fast a couple times, and then the fuel starts flowing. The, the tube full, full up. <laughs> but now you can hear it. You can hear that ball as, as the, the fuel. The fuel cycles past it. I don't know how long it takes. I've never timed it, but uh, but this is it. Okay, so we can see it's finishing up there, and uh, so to spare you the uh, <laughs> to spare you watching that, it took uh, three minutes and thirty seconds to do that five gallons of fuel. So uh, there's still a little bit left in the tube. What I do is uh, pull that up and turn it upside down. Let all the fuel run out of the hose. And that was a five gallon fuel transfer without a single drop spilled, except for when I opened the cap. I just, that was for demonstration, but not a single drop of fuel uh, on the ground. Uh, absolutely none on the truck. Uh, this, the Super Siphon is a uh, fantastic way to uh, change that fuel out. Okay, can number two. See if you can see the fuel going through the hose a little bit better this time. Change the camera angle. I already bled the can off, so it's not a not an issue. Make sure I got enough hose. And so here we go. That's it. This is a uh, nozzle that goes on to the to the spout of the gas can, and uh, it's a military surplus nozzle. I, I don't think that they work that well. They're they're kind of leaky. However, they're better than nothing. But a super siphon that I think is much superior costs less than this thing does. So consider uh, 
uh, consider the super siphon but this this might be something that works for you if you need a spout okay so that was that was it that's how i swapped the fuel out it's a it's a pretty easy thing it's it's not hard to do at all and uh um, the cans in the back of my truck, I have a super siphon with them all the time, so I always always have that available, and uh, it, ju it just works. I, uh, I don't know everything about fuel storage. I hope I've given you a little something to think about, um, but you need to have some fuel around in case there is an emergency. So think about what you're going to do now. Don't wait until it happens. If you got more questions about disaster preparation in general, we have a fantastic sub-forum on GetOffTheX.com called D Disaster Preparedness with topics that include fuel storage and food storage and how much food do you need and what kind of foods can you grow in your geographic areas and uh, just a, a plethora of, of survival and, and disaster preparedness information that uh, anybody that's serious about it could certainly, could, could certainly learn something from the, this group of people. And there are guys a lot smarter than me on there that have some really good ideas about stuff. I do appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. Please share this video with folks. And uh, if there's ever anything we can do you do for you, don't hesitate to ask. You can jump. You can see us on Facebook or getoffthex.com to ask follow-up questions. And uh, if you ever need us, please let us know. This is James Jagger for Tactical Response, reminding you your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.